Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series and we are going to be talking about the top five countries to play as a beginner. Now for this we are going to first kind of do a little bit of background ideas and then we're going to go into the five. The first four are in no particular order where we're kind of giving a specific reason for wanting to play this country um, that might be attractive and all, as well as some pitfalls and this sort of stuff. But the last one is going to be the very top suggestion. Now for this list we have uh, you know several things in mind. The first is we're not including any great powers on this list. Not because they're terrible for learning on, but I feel like usually when people ask, hey, I'm a beginner, I'm just learning the game, what should I play? They're usually looking to not play one of the very strongest countries in the game for a couple of reasons. First, there can be a lot of moving parts or a lot to keep track of. The bigger the country gets, the more there is to micromanage. Uh, but second of all, they want to kind of, uh, you know, come on up and feel the sense of growing power, which is hard if you start off with the, as the very number one power. And so um, because of this, we are going to be excluding these, not because they are uh, bad to learn on. They're pretty universally good to learn on. Some have their own unique challenges, but for the most part, you could see your way through it. Second of all, we're going to be not. We're going to be looking at countries that do not have a lot of discrimination. Discrimination is a mechanic that's a little bit hard to get your head around, and so a country like the British East India Company, which would be well, these guys are huge as well, so they're maybe not a good choice. But they have an enormous amount of discrimination, which makes them hard to play. So does you know the Dutch East Indies or a country like Transvaal, and if you don't know what's going on with discrimination it can be a very frustrating mechanic we're also looking for countries that in particular have really good resources um, and have access to as much resources as possible that way you don't necessarily have to expand in order to find these resources um, we also are looking for countries that are not facing super significant threats or have to fight immediately and so a country like Egypt or Mexico who is the AI is pretty well scripted to want to fight you um, a very very early on into the game we are not going to be suggesting countries like these Egypt also has poor resources but Mexico would otherwise be a reasonable choice if not for the fact that the USAA is going to try to manifest their destiny through you know Mexico's guts and finally we are looking to find uh, five countries that have at least a little bit of local flavor or some sort of higher goal in mind that you can have for your first run um, so that you can feel like you are playing towards something you know specific and so without further ado Let's get into the list. First up, we have Japan, which is a very interesting country. It boasts a very large population. It has access to every resource uh, that you are going to need in the early game, including both silk and dyes. So you will not have to trade in order to get these, which is very good because... Japan starts off with the isolationism law, and they start off with a very backward set of laws, and isolationism makes it so you cannot trade, which means you have to internally organize your entire economy without being able to trade with others. Now, in later patches or more recent patches, the AI is a lot more aggressive towards Japan, and this is uh, something that will be a little bit of a struggle for Japan uh, because they will be trying to open your market. But Japan boasts an interesting play pattern in that you will be learning how to, you know, manage an entire economy, what all the inputs are for everything, uh, because you will have to source all of it yourself while you are on isolationism. And so this play pattern is quite interesting. And also, because they are backward, both technologically speaking and in terms of their laws, you will have a lot of opportunity to reform the laws. And so this is kind of going to be where you're getting your satisfaction from uh, in terms of, of figuring out a way to try and get off of monarchy and autocracy. You have some unique interest groups uh, and flavor that make this hard harder and so it is more of a challenge um, you know because you will be having samurai which have unique uh, ideologies such as bakufu uh, which is going to make them more oriented towards some of these repressive laws and so this will provide a bit of an interesting play pattern on top of you know you're just going to eco up by yourself kind of and chill uh, in terms of the economy I don't recommend this for expansion the European powers will side against you very aggressively if you are attacking other people as long as you have this isolated market which is is something you want to overcome there's some cheese you could do to overcome it quicker but if you're a newer player this might be an interesting experience the europeans might come for you this is just a little bit of a warning and you also have quite a bit of local flavor for japan in terms of you're going to have stuff like the terra koya system you're also going to be trying to in terms of what you are trying to do uh as uh you know a goal for the run or at least your initial thing is the national or sorry the honorable restoration event chain or journal entry which is is going to help you to bring uh, your nation from being backward and oriented you know towards this monarchy surf 
serfdom, autocracy, and move it more in the direction of industrializing. And so this makes Japan an interesting and fun play uh, for a newer player, especially if you kind of just want to, you know, build and chill and start to, like, learn how all the various systems in terms of production methods and managing different stuff works. <laughs> Next up, we have Belgium. Now, a lot of times when people are looking for a country they wanna play, one of the questions they might ask is, hey, I wanna play tall, who's good for playing tall? And the notion of playing tall doesn't quite fit into Victoria 3 for a variety of reasons, but if there were to be a country that would be best for playing tall, it would be Belgium, because they have this absolute excellent state in Wallonia, which is going to have kind of rainbow resources in the sense that they have every color of resource, which is going to be very good because you care about having vertically integrated economies because of a mechanic known as local pricing, which we're not going to get into, but having everything in one place is really good. And so half your states have basically every resource in Wallonia, and so building tall in Wallonia will be quite strong. Your capital is here in Flanders, and you have just two states, a relatively low population. But for that, you are, you start out with the very best tech in the game, which is very, very, very nice, and you also start off with pre pretty reasonable laws, and so a ton of reforming will not necessarily be necessary and so this is your kind of your strength one of the weaknesses of Belgium is going to be the fact that France will often get a journal entry for taking your land and so you will have to you know sort of prepare yourself for this eventuality this might break the run this is one of the more riskier starts but you will still learn while playing as Belgium and trying to figure this out one of the easier ways to get defense or help uh, you know in an eventual war with France um, and this is something you can also be thinking of when you are trying to build up your economy is joining the United Kingdom's market which is going to have uh, several nice effects well first of all they are very likely to help you diplomatically but second of all if you are inside their customs union you can siphon off migrants from them as long as they are accepted um, and so this will be a way for you to increase your population and still be able to keep building uh, you know kind of in your two little states you can expand fairly well as Belgium you do have a little bit of a starting navy and uh, army um, the fact that you have the best military tech is going to be nice for that but that's not really what they're for a long-term plan for Belgium or a long-term goal for Belgium can also be the formation of the United Netherlands if we jump into the cultures tab and nation formation, you will see that they can form the United Netherlands. They can also form Central Europe, uh, but that is probably a bit much for a newer player. But if you subjugate uh, eventually, you know, uh, the Netherlands, uh, you know, either take one state from them in one war, this will cost a lot of infamy, and then do something like try and protectorate them, and then uh, following that, reduce their autonomy once, you will be able to click up, form the United Netherlands, and have this nice colonial empire um, in the form of the Dutch. East Indies as well, uh, where there will be, you know, plenty of stuff like dyes and silk. And so you will have this nice uh, base for kind of building up as well as, you know, some goals in terms of Belgium. And at the very start, you will just be, for the most part, building stuff in Wallonia. And so it's fairly straightforward. And being inside of a customs union is also uh, something that can make the game a lot easier because when you're inside of a customs union, you don't necessarily have to source everything yourself like you would with Japan. And so so playing Belgium inside the customs union, it's still a way to learn, but it's kind of a lot different than the, how you would be learning the game playing on Japan. I also wanted to point out that Belgium has two of the very best companies in the game in uh, the society on a, however this is pronounced, John Cockrell and Compagnie du Congo, this probably being the very best wood company in the game and this probably being the very best tool company in the game, which helps you for, you know, that building tall type of feel. <laughs> Next up, we have the only other unrecognized country on this list, in addition to Japan, uh, which is Persia. Now, Persia, you are going to get the same sort of feel for, you know, starting relatively backward in technology and having to, you know, catch up in addition to also being uh, kind of backward in the laws. You will not have the enormous population base that Japan has, but what you will have is some of the very best resources in the game. In fact, on a, you know, per density basis uh, or per population per density basis, you probably have the best resources in the game, having access to a ton of mineral resources, which means you really won't have to expand anywhere else for anything except for rubber. You have a ton of oil that will appear in the 
western portion of your country and you can build dyes cotton silk and even opium you will have access to all of this uh, as Persia and so this will give you a very very strong base you won't necessarily have to go out in order to get anything um, and you will be able to build everything locally you will also have pretty soft spots you can expand into and unlike Japan you have normal looking interest groups and so this will give you a more sandboxy feel where you will have you know good options for expansion good options for just chilling chilling and building um, the one struggle you will have is countries will sometimes come for you in particular Russia will often be aggressive towards you they start with poor relations and so this is going to be an obstacle to overcome and so you will definitely want to try and improve relations with Russia and try and you know play nice with them but you will have a very very nice seat of power here in Persia the only resource you're kind of lacking in other than the rubber is the fact that you don't have a ton of logging uh, but this will give you a nice sort of generic sandboxy uh, type of play there aren't like special journal entries for Persia you just have really really nice resources and a lot to get done in terms of catch up on technology as well as law passing to reform your country and so this is an interesting play or an interesting country to play from that perspective <laughs> Next up, we have Sardinia Piedmont, which of course will be looking to form Italy as its primary objective. This is going to be the more interesting aspect of them, where you can go for what is a major unification, which means you can do it diplomatically. And so in order to do this, you will have to be playing around with the notion of pulling all of these other Italian states into your customs union uh, and improving relations with them in order to do it diplomatically. You can, of course, do it militarily as well. Uh, the minor unifications always going to be military the major unifications you can do them diplomatically and so this will be a fun little experience where you try and improve relations increase volume of trade with these other countries in italy maybe looking to gobble up the italian ones or the, sorry not the italian ones the smaller ones yourself one important thing to note is that if they are in austria's customs union which a few start in austria's customs union austria will almost always defend them so you don't want to necessarily attack them militarily uh, but this will be a fun play you also start off with really really nice resources in both Piedmont and Sardinia uh, which is going to make uh, you know industrializing nice and smooth you can source most stuff yourself you don't have access to the eastern um, sorts of agriculture very much but you can always import it uh, and you will be wanting to do a lot of trade and make money moves one of the challenges you will face with Sardinia Piedmont is not going to be in the way of you know either your starting laws which are fairly reasonable or you're starting tech which is pretty middling but instead uh, France is going to generally want back Savoy um, or they will want to reincorporate this you can just give it to them it's not too big a deal uh, but if you're looking to keep on to this um, this might present a little bit of a challenge but if you manage to form Italy and make some friends uh, this will be a little bit easier for you you'll also maybe have to fight Austria over the fact that there will be secessions of San Marco in uh, northern Italy uh, that will fight Austria you will have the option to help them and so this will present a challenge uh, in addition to forming Italy in terms of trying to get all of the Italian states uh, you know in terms of the Italian strategic region uh, as a bit of an objective and so this will give you a nice playthrough and the good resources you start with uh, will make stuff relatively smooth uh, in, com in comparison to you know the other Italian states uh, that you could start with only Sardinia Piedmont has uh, in particular really good resource states um, uh, to look to towards um you know well th th i think there's one that's kind of okay here in two sicilies but for the most part yeah it's in calibria this one's kind of okay but it will be much much easier and straightforward uh for a beginner player to be playing sardinia piedmont if you are looking to form italy and this major unification play will be fun and interesting and it is a lot less complex than doing it as prussia for forming germany and mega germany uh which will present more challenges and is a little bit more complicated sardinia Piedmont is going to be a better learner nation for these major unifications, which are very satisfying, you know, to click the button and uh, form Big Italy. <laughs> Finally, we are going to have Spain, which is my number one recommendation for people who want to learn the game and play on a country and don't want to play a great power. Spain, in particular, is going to have a very sandboxy feel, much like Persia. You have 
pretty strong resources, not quite as good as Persia, uh, but the important thing is you have a lot of states with both coal and iron, which is going to be the main important uh, pair to have for the process of industrialization. One of these states even has an iron mine bonus, which is very rare, and towards that end of industrializing, you actually have two very strong companies in Duro y Campania and Altos Hornos de Vizcaya. Um, these will allow you to have a very, very nice come up, uh, and in addition to, you know, a very pretty, pretty good size population to exploit um, this will allow you to grow pretty reasonably and look to challenge the gps in a relatively good order and i think this kind of ability to come on up uh gives uh spain a nice feel uh in addition to having you know access to uh sufficient resources kind of everywhere i'm pretty sure they have a state with sulfur uh yeah here's the sulfur state and so you will have access to everything and be reasonably strong one of the other objectives you can go for with Spain, um, uh, and just want a quick note, this thing here, you have really strong laws or relatively strong laws at the start of the game, and you have a reasonable kind of European-ish tech not being the cutting edge. But back to the point, one of the things you can go for with Spain that is going to be pretty nice is going to be the forming Iberia, which is going to give you uh, a lot of power. This is a minor unification, which means you will have to militarily subjugate uh, Portugal in order to get this off uh, but what you can do to that end is you can uh, do a little bit of cheese and we're going to show how this cheese works and just very briefly is um, the UK will almost always side with Portugal because they have a defensive pact I don't think you should go if Portugal uh, go after Portugal at the very beginning of the game but one of the things you can do is you can with Portugal uh, you can protectorate them but before you do it uh, you just join a play on the side of the UK which will make it so they are not allowed to join against you which will effectively invalidate Portugal's uh, defensive pact uh, that they have with the UK UK will not be able to join them and so what we can do is we can just protectorate them after we protectorate them we only need to reduce autonomy on them once and then also i believe we need to have pan-nationalism in, in order to form iberia here and so this will give you a, a nice long-term goal now as you can see france doesn't like this a lot of other countries will side against you if you try and do this but you can at least uh make it so that the uk cannot side against you so this would not be a winnable war at the start but this can be a long-term goal for you to do as spain um you know in terms of uh, an objective is forming iberia and trying to chase the number one gp spot i think that spain uh is reasonable to become the number one gp uh over the course of you know kind of a medium to long size run for a beginner player especially if you're able to form Iberia. If we just swap to Portugal and then back down, we can show you just how powerful you know Spain will be uh, with both of these combined. Actually, no, we can't form the nation until we have pan-nationalism, so this won't quite work, but it does give a good idea of an objective for you to go for for Spain. That's going to give you a lot of power, um, you know, kind of in the longer term. Portugal has a decent population, and when you incorporate Portugal, uh, which has, you know, around six and a half million pops here, uh, you will also get access to all of its holdings in Africa, allowing you to create a nice colonial empire, um, you know, starting a Spain and have kind of a clear plan and just try and come up uh, as strong as you can in terms of challenging these GPs. Uh, and I think this will be a relatively fun run and a good one to learn on uh, because Spain does not uh, have any unique challenges that are like unique to that country and specific and strange uh, like some of the GPs even have um, you know everything feels relatively vanilla and so I think it's a good experience for learning the game and so just to quickly go back through uh, kind of the countries we recommended um, and kind of give a brief reason for each of these I think Japan is interesting uh, specifically because it's isolationist allowing you to come on up they also have a lot of population and so the process of industrialization in addition to having the uh doing wanting to do the honorable restoration and having some journal entries i think japan is a pretty fun one I think Persia is a very nice for sandboxy feel. They have tremendously strong resources, and if you particularly wanted to go after reforming a whole bunch of laws, they start with really backward laws, and so this experience can be fun and interesting uh, to you know explore. I think Belgium's really good for playing tall. Uh, they in particular have some of the best companies in the game. They have this really nice state in Wallonia. They have really good tech, um, and you can form the United Netherlands. Your struggle will be France can come after you, and that is a little bit spooky. And then uh, finally, in addition to Spain, 
we have a Sardinia Piedmont, which is going to be very well posed for forming Italy. Uh, in particular, they have nice estates in both Piedmont and uh, Sardinia, uh, which are going to be pretty nice. And you can do a, a major nation formation with them, allowing you to kind of uh, play around with the game's customs unions and such. You can do this with any country, but in particular, you will get the eventual very nice payoff of forming Italy if you can get all of these other Italians into your customs union uh, and that will feel pretty good and be uh, something that is fun to play. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to give it a like, comment, subscribe, you know, do the YouTube algorithm thing and have a good day.